in this video we're going to be discussing the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is going to be the cellular material between the plasma membrane and the nucleus, which is sort of chunked apart so you can see inside of it there. Um, there are three components to the cytoplasm, technically. There is the cytosol, which is sort of like this gel-like fluid that kind of keeps things fluid and it also kind of retains things inside of there. There are cytoplasmic inclusions, such as granules or particles that might sort of be floating around in the cytosol, sometimes on purpose, if you have a granule producing cell. We'll discuss a few of those this semester and next semester. And then there are cytoplasmic organelles. Technically, the nucleus isn't considered an organelle by most definitions. All of these other structures that you're looking at here are considered organelles. So let's discuss those in this video. Let's discuss the mitochondrion, probably the best known organelle. The, the word organelle means tiny organ. So there are structures within the cell that do things that have particular roles to kind of keep the cell um, going the way it needs to go. Probably the best known organelle is the mitochondrion, which is nicknamed the powerhouse of the cell. As you can see, it's a membrane organ, it's a membranous organelle, and its job is to produce most of the ATP for a cell. What it does is it breaks down food particles or food molecules, and then it transfers the energy of the bonds from the food into ATP. Now, we're not going to go into the details of the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle. Uh, you're welcome if you know what these are. They're miserable topics, so we're not going to go into that. But suffice to say that there are processes within this organelle that allow us to take things such as glucose. You know the you know what glucose is. It's that... that um, ringed structure, when you break apart the bonds there, you break apart those covalent bonds, it releases energy. Now what the mitochondrion does, if you release that energy inside of a mitochondrion, it allows you to take that energy and actually transfer it into ATP, which is an energy currency that the cell now recognizes, for example, to power the pumps that it needs, like the sodium potassium pump, for example. Um, so if you have a lot of mitochondria in your cell, you're going to produce a lot of ATP, especially if you have access to lots of oxygen. Again, we're not going to go into the details of the Krebs cycle, but again, suffice it to say that you do need oxygen for this process. It's called the final electron acceptor, and it allows you to process your oxygen. Uh, it allows you to pr uh, break apart bonds in food, such as glucose or such as fats or other sugars, and it allows you then to transfer the breakdown of those bonds into ATP, which can then power the cell. All right, so you need oxygen for that process. If you have oxygen present, you can produce 32 ATP per glucose molecule. If you do not have oxygen present, it's called anaerobic respiration. So respiration is the the basically the ability of a cell to create power for itself um, and if you're creating if you're respiring in the presence of oxygen it's called aerobic respiration if you do not have oxygen present it is called anaerobic respiration and aerobic respiration is much more efficient you create 32 ATP for every glucose if you do not have oxygen present it's called glycolysis and you only produce 2 ATP per glucose. So I think that's all I want to say about that. I'm sorry that we're missing a lot of details there, but they are, uh, it's, it's a lot of details. <laughs> so the mitochondria producing ATP, the powerhouse of the cell. Next, we're going to take a look at the endoplasmic reticulum. There is actually two components to this, the rough endoplasmic reticulum, or the rough ER, or the RER. And then there is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, or the smooth ER, or the SER. Let's talk about that rough endoplasmic reticulum first. We have this, uh, these flattened um, membranes here, as you can see here. It helps to manufacture proteins, um, mostly by having these little dots on its surface. So the reason it's called the rough ER is that it has these little dots called ribosomes. Now ribosomes are tiny little dark uh, dark staining granules. Um, they, they consist of, um, they're basically made of protein and a special kind of RNA called ribosomal RNA. So our RNA and proteins together make this little ribosome. And so you can see that the RER is dotted with the ribosomes. The purpose of a ribosome is to 
um, it is the, basically the site of protein synthesis. We will discuss this briefly in the next um, in uh, the next unit or in the next class period. So ribosomes are on the RER, and that's how it gets its name. Protein synthesis, basically. All right, let's take a look at the SER. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum is not as well known. I will say that basically the job of the SER is to store stuff. So the most well-known example of this would be cells within the liver. They are called hepatocytes, and they have a particular, um, they have a particular, they, they actually have a lot of really cool <laughs> jobs. But one of the jobs they have is to monitor your blood for toxins. So when you eat food, take medicine, drink alcohol, for example, if you're 21, you're going to absorb those st structures into your blood and the blood is going to go straight to the liver first. It's going to go to the liver always first. The liver then filters your blood. And what it does is it takes these hepatocytes and it, the hepatocytes can actually pull out those toxins and those toxins are stored in the SER. So the, the basic job of the SER is storage. There's another example of this, which would be, we're going to talk about this this semester, so I'll mention it here. Muscle cells have an SER that is called the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and its job is to store calcium. Calcium is very important for muscle contraction, so you have to have a really good storage of calcium, and that's what the SER does in those particular cells. Um, the SER also Again, in the liver, in the hepatocytes, we'll store these structures called glycogen. Um, and glycogen is a compact form of sugars um, that allow you to have a ready release uh, supply of sugars in case you're going through a period of fasting. You have this glycogen in your liver, and the SER can release those stores. So it's, it's basically storage. SER is storage. Hopefully I've given you enough examples. I think I've made my point. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Next, we're going to take a look at our Golgi apparatus here. Uh, okay, the Golgi apparatus is a series of stacked, flattened, membranous sacs that are associated with um, membranous vesicles. We have a secretory vesicle here. The main function of the Golgi apparatus is to modify, concentrate, and package proteins and lipids that were created uh, and were released at the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so we have these vesicles, and these will contain uh, structures that will be transported somewhere within the cell. So the Golgi apparatus contains these vesicles, these vesicles contain lipids, transmembrane proteins, and this allows you to either release structures from the cell or incorporate some structures directly into the cell membrane. Let me find another picture of this here. All right, so here it's showing the ER, it's showing the Golgi apparatus, and then it's showing the release of these vesicles that allow us perhaps to release something through exocytosis, releasing something directly from the cell, or um, it doesn't really show, it could be incorporating something into the membrane. Here it seems to be creating new membrane here, more plasma membrane. Or look at this guy right here. This is actually another organelle called a lysosome. Now you'll see that lysosome, L-Y-S, you've seen that before. It means to break something apart. So lysosomes are these little organelles. They tend to be spherical, um, again, surrounded by a membrane. These contain digestive enzymes. Uh, they might, for example, be able to break down structures within the cell that are old or worn out or dying, I guess, and they kind of break them down. It's sort of like a little stomach inside of your cell. It usually contains acids and enzymes that is specifically meant to break things down, right? Lyse them, to break them apart. My favorite organelle, by the way, the lysosome is my favorite organelle. It's always been my favorite. You should have a favorite organelle. All right, um, in this case, you'll see this lysosome combining together with another structure creating a phagosome. I don't know. Uh, we'll talk about those in the second semester. So the word lice means to break apart, and some, S-O-M-E or S-O-M-A, any of those roots mean body. So this is a body inside of your cells that lices things, that breaks things apart. 